Howdy, Immortalium here, and today I'm going to be discussing A Thousand One Nights. So first of all, what is A Thousand One Nights? A Thousand One Nights, it was a film released in 1969, um, directed by H. E. Yamamoto, um, but produced and written by Osamu Tezuka. Um, if you know that name, it's because he's very famous. He did Astro Boy, he's done Blackjack, he's considered the god of manga. His company, Mushi Production, was an animation company that ultimately fell, um, it became bankrupt. In the latter years, uh, he came up with this concept of the Anime Rama Trilogy. And uh, what would that trilogy be? What was it trying to accomplish? Um, he was trying to bring anime to the masses um, in an adult form to prove that anime wasn't simply for children, that it could also be enjoyed by adults as well. Ultimately, the films didn't do particularly well at the box office and they contributed to Mushi production going under. But the question is, is this a good film? And that's what I'm here to talk about. So first of all, what's the story? Uh, the story follows a character called Aldeen. He is a water merchant and he has arrived at Baghdad. At Baghdad, he f comes across a auction in which um, slave girls are being sold off, and he finds one called Miriam. Uh, he attempts to bid, but unfortunately he's too broke, and he's outbid by this very rich, pompous <laughs> noble boy. But a tornado hits Baghdad, and during the commotion, um, Aldeen uh, either you can call it kidnapped or rescued her, it depends on your point of view. They run away together, and that's the very beginning of the film. Now, as the name implies, this is an adaptation of the literary tales A Thousand and One Nights. Throughout the film, there are many, many references to the stories. Um, many of the stories are actually told in some shape or form. And on one hand, um, it does tell a very sweeping, epic tale with very likable characters. Um, but on the other hand, there are certain points that can feel either disjointed, where like it feels like you're just going from one story to the next, or it can also be a case that sometimes it feels a bit bloated. Uh, this film is two hours and ten minutes long, making it one of the longest uh, animated films of all time. And it can feel that way sometimes. It feels like certain story points could have been cut out and might have made a kind of a neater, trimmer film. Overall though, um, the story is quite entertaining and you do feel invested in many of these characters. So overall the story is good, it's a nice sweeping epic, with some great comedy by the way, but it could have been improved. Where this film really stands out is the animation. This film has so many different forms of animation. Um, this was around the time that Osama Tezuka was becoming very experimental and um, Eiji Yamamoto was an extremely talented director and they got uh, Osamu Dezaki, who another very famous animator, to be the art director for this. Um, so there's a huge amount of talent behind this film and it really shows. Um, there's the occasional animation error but in general this is a really scrumptious looking movie to look at and if you're an animation fan you will get a lot out of this film. Um, quite often we're watching just simply high quality animation, like regular 2D animation. Um, but quite often it'll switch to other animation styles. For instance, the city of Baghdad is represented as a model, actual model city. And we see these pans, these lovely pans going across the city of Baghdad. It's absolutely scrumptious looking. We see like some animated sequences where there's real footage in the background. There we see there's some very minimalist animation, we see some very trippy looking animation. There's just so many wonderful sequences of animation in this film that it's an absolute dream to look at as a fan of animation. It does kind of bring into question though how Osama Tezuka expected this to appeal to the masses. Um, this film is quite experimental and uh, even though his ambition was to bring animation to the mainstream, it's very hard to imagine a mainstream audience finding all these various forms of animation quite appealing. Now the soundtrack is also another thing that stands out very strongly. Of course, as a sweeping epic, uh, historical epic, um, we have many, many, many pieces of music that sound like they could have come out of um, Lawrence of Arabia or Gladiator. Um, but then we also have these odd kind of moments of like almost jazz music as well, some very kind of contemporary-esque forms of music. Certainly aren't jarring, but certainly contributed to that more kind of experimental feel of the film. It's 
It's still a really good soundtrack. Uh, it was made by Isao Tamita. It's, it is a really good film to listen to. Speaking of the voice cast, um, this film had a lot of uh, talent behind it, a lot of celebrities lent their voice to it. In fact, a lot of um, authors, uh, friends of Osama Tezuka, actually um, contributed to this film um, in the voice cast as well, in small roles of course. Um, but this film was a big deal when it came out. And everyone of course acts like great as well, like they know that they're in something very special. It's a great um, cast overall. With regards to how it was released over here, um, what I have is the uh, UK version of this uh, collection from Third Window Films. And um, this is actually a box set that contains both A Thousand and One Night, the first film of the Anime Rama trilogy, and the second film, Cleopatra. This, of course, um, is Japanese only. There is an English dub of this film, although it had a lot of uh, sequences cut out. Um, apparently, Discotech Media, who is intending to release this film in the future for America, apparently has found the, um, the English dub. I'm not sure how they're going to be able to manage that. They'll probably have to release it on two separate discs, or maybe they'll release both um, two versions of the same film on one disc. But this version here, this UK version, does not have um, that English dub, so it's Japanese only. Besides that, there's a very nice booklet that was uh, compiled by uh, Simon Abrams, uh, which gives a lot of very nice information about this film. It is quite short. Um, there's only about three pages devoted to each film, but it does still give you quite a nice amount of information. And beyond that, we also have um, an audio commentary by Helen McCarthy. Now, some of you might be thinking, Helen McCarthy, that name sounds kind of familiar. Where do I know that name? Well, if you look over here, you'll notice that this book here and uh, this book up here was written by her, and she is a expert um, on the subject of manga and Japanese animation. Um, and she gives a huge amount of information here. Like, it's a really, really nice amount of information that we get from her. Uh, she does an excellent job of presenting this film, of explaining its production and everything. And beyond that, we also have an interview with Eiji Yamamoto, a new interview, as they point out, which is 50 minutes long. Uh, so you get a lot of nice, very nice information out of that. So it's quite a nice little package, um, this release. And I fully encourage anyone who has access to a Region B uh, Blu-ray player to um, pick up this uh, box set of these films um, because there's a very nice amount of extras, they're presented very well. Um, there is the occasional mistake in the subtitling, um, but it's not enough to actually take away from the enjoyment of the film. So overall, what are my thoughts on this film? Um, I enjoyed it quite a bit, particularly as a fan of animation. Is it a particularly great film. Um, it's a little too flawed um, to be uh, held up there as a classic, um, but on the other hand it shows a lot of ambition, a lot of amazing animated sequences, an engaging story, um, a very nice soundtrack. Um, there's a lot to like about this film and I encourage you, if you're a fan of anime, if you're a fan of animation, to seek this film out, whether it be the UK release that is available now, or the upcoming Discotech Media release in America. So thanks for watching, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye-bye.